One night, a house caught fire, and a young boy was forced to flee to the roof. The father stood on the ground below with outstretched arms, calling to his son, Jump! I'll catch you! He knew the boy had to jump to save his life. All the boy could see, however, was flame, smoke, and blackness. As can be imagined, he was afraid to leave the roof. His father kept yelling, Jump! I will catch you! But the boy protested, Daddy, I can't see you! The father replied, But I can see you, and that's all that matters. The boy jumped because he trusted his father. The Christian faith enables us to face life or meet death, not because we can see, but with the certainty that we are seen. Not that we know all the answers, but that we are known. We live by faith in God, but what use is our faith if we don't actively live it out? Just like the boy who is afraid in the burning building, he can't see his father below with his arms wide open, but he believes that he is there. He has faith that his dad is there even though he can't see. That's kind of like our faith in God, don't you think? We know God is here at dinner church, active in our lives. We know he's helping us and he's guiding us. But what good is it for the boy who is standing on that roof to simply believe that his dad is there below? The house is still on fire, right? The flames are still closing in. He has faith, yes. But what needs to happen? The boy needs to take action. And maybe that's the hardest part, you guys. Maybe that's the hardest part. We can't see Daddy below, and we're caught in this fire. We've got to jump out the window into Dad's arms, and we can't see him. So maybe we take that leap of faith, and we jump, knowing and believing that God will catch us. But we can't see him. That's not easy, is it? It's not easy to have that kind of faith. So we can stand on that roof all day while the fires are burning. And in the same way, our faith in God is useless and empty unless it's followed by action, by works. As the founder of the Salvation Army said, this is William Booth speaking, he said, Faith and works should travel side by side, step answering to step like the legs of men walking. First faith, then works, then faith again, and then works again, until they can scarcely distinguish which is the one and which is the other. Our scripture today said, What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, goodbye, and have a good day. Stay warm out there and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? You know, what what, what if I gathered all you together for dinner church and said, all right, everybody eat, but there was no food over there. (laughs) That wouldn't work. We want to do more than say, have a great meal. We want to have a meal. (laughs) Faith and action. And in other simple words, faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. The scripture continues today. You say you have faith, for you believe there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? And very simply, guys, we've got to live this out. 
I think that's what our scripture in James chapter 2 is saying. We've really got to walk the walk. Otherwise, we're just playing games at church, and there's no point to that. We've got to go through the process of being a Christian. We've got to walk through the steps and really do it. Let me ask you guys this. When you die, do you want to go to heaven or to hell? Jesus came to save us from our sins and to give us new life. The truth is, every single person here will have to stand before God at the end of our lives and give an account for how we lived. Every single person. And you will not be able to call a friend or anything like who wants to be a millionaire or any of that. You will not be able to call a friend or call in someone else to help you. It's just between you and God. And there are two possibilities that will happen at this moment. And this moment will occur in your life when you stand before God. It'll, it'll be for me, it'll be for you, it'll be for every single person here. Two possibilities. Here's the first one. God will judge you based on how well you perform the Ten Commandments. How well you didn't steal. How well you honored your father and mother. How, how well you um, uh, lived in purity. How, how well you kept God first in everything. And every single one of us, if we were judged by that standard, would be found guilty as charged. Because the truth is, we've all violated probably most of those commands, if not all of them. Um, one that people say, well, I never killed anybody. Yeah, but Jesus said if you have hatred in your heart, that makes you a murderer. So if we were judged by the Ten Commandments, we would all be in big trouble. Good thing there's option two. Option two says that we'll go before God and we'll be judged according to the perfection of Jesus Christ. The perfect life that Jesus lived, the perfect death that he offered on the cross, and the fact that he resurrected from the dead and that he's alive right now. You will be judged based on if you were like Jesus himself. That's what Jesus does for us. When we stand before God, God sees the perfection of Jesus. So it's like we wear this garment of Jesus to stand before God and say, look, I'm clothed in Jesus, your son. And God says, yes, that's what I wanted. That's all I ask, that you be clothed in my son, Jesus. That's, that's all he wanted. Not that we made up for our sins. We, we could never do that. But that Jesus paid the penalty for them. And if we have Jesus Christ as our Savior, then God says, you are not guilty. You are presumed now innocent. And you are now going to paradise forever with God as your best friend there eternally. Paradise forever. This is true, and this is real. This is not a metaphor. This is not a simile. This is not like a uh, something that just wants to point us to be a better person. This is a reality. As as much as you sit in this room right now, it is a reality that you will see God face to face, and that you will go one of two places. I've learned that is a reality. So. We all get to make our choice. What is your choice to be? Where is your future going to be? Well, let me share with you how you can know Jesus and live a good Christian life. Because that's really what the scripture is talking about, how to be a Christian who lives rightly. The first step is coming to know God. You can come to dinner church and hear about Jesus Christ over and over again. You can hear it. You can like it. You can think, wow, I like this Jesus guy. But you're really then just observing from the outside. And that, 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 that was my experience for a while. I, I saw Jesus from afar and I said, I like this Jesus. But we're still on the outside looking in, aren't we? We can say God is real and I appreciate his ways. But here's when the change happens. 
we, we, we go from saying God is real and looking at God and saying I like God to God living inside me. Having God's Holy Spirit in me. You go from saying God is there to having God as your own personal Father. That is the big difference. Have you made a decision to receive Jesus Christ of Nazareth as your personal Savior? It's between you and Jesus. Not between you, me, and to Jesus. No, it's not between you and that your family follows Jesus. It's between you and Jesus personally. Nobody else. So embrace Jesus yourself. Not, I like that, it's good, I, I see it over there and I like it. No, it's here, it's in me. I'm a Christian, I follow Jesus. So ask Jesus Christ of Nazareth to be your personal Savior. Give your entire life to Jesus. I encourage you right now, stop what you're doing and whisper in your heart, Jesus Christ, I make you the Lord of my life. I am yours and you are mine. I give my life to you, Jesus. Can you say that in your heart right now? I give my life to you, Jesus. All my sins are nailed to the cross with you, Jesus. You suffered and died for my lies, for my misery, for my emptiness. Jesus, I am yours. I give myself to you. Jesus, you are mine. You live in me. Join a life group here at the Citadel. Getting fed from the Bible each week. You learn to talk to God, to study the Bible, and to grow in holiness. We change. We see the sins fall away. We develop relationships with other people here in the church. This is vital. This is huge as far as action goes. Getting connected in the church. Because a Christian that tries to stand alone will get taken down alone. But a Christian who is gathered in fellowship has to turn the flock, has the protection of others, has people who can call them out on their nonsense. Oh yeah, I love that. That's one of my favorites. The third step is dive into discipleship groups. This is to go deeper with God. You're saying, I've been a Christian a while now. You begin to study theology. And spiritual disciplines. You begin to identify your spiritual gifts. And you learn how to share Jesus with lost people out there. You learn to give and serve. It's exciting. It's exciting. It's, I, I'm learning to grow. I'm becoming a, a warrior for Christ. I love that. That's fun. And the fourth step. This is working for a while. You're discipling. You're growing. You're praying. You're growing in holiness. Now you want to start serving. It's not enough for you to sit back and listen. You want to serve. I want to get involved. I want to get on the front lines of this war for the salvation of the world. So you join the serving brigade. You join the prayer team. You help set up here at the dinner church. You help read scripture. You pray for us. You start doing good works. You start doing evangelism. Start going to the, into the jail to visit the prisoners. Start going to the hospital to visit people who are sick. You start really living it out. You become a volunteer, a, a warrior for Christ who's at work in the world. You begin to use your gifts and talents for God's glory. That's amazing. I love that. There's nothing that feels better and more joyous in your heart than know, knowing that you're serving God with your gifts and talents. It is a beautiful thing. So in a moment, we're going to give you an opportunity to respond respond to the message today. But first we see our scripture today conclude by sharing two examples of faith and action. It says, don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. And so it happened just as the scripture says. Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. 
Rahab the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without the works. Faith is action, you guys. So I'm going to encourage you in just a minute here to, to, to take some action. God builds us through actions, right? It's not, it's not enough to just sit back and listen. He builds us when we jump up and make an action. We do something in response to his word and to faith. Have you made a decision to step up and grow in your faith? Now is the time to step out. I'd like to invite Zach, Lexi, and Jonathan to go to your stations. You will notice that on our four pillars here, we have marked Dinner Church right over there, Life Group right there, Discipleship right there, and Soldiering, and Serving Brigade right there. These are steps one through four that we just talked about. In a moment, we'll invite everyone to stand and choose which step you are on as of right now or where you'd like to be. If you're at step one right here, you come to the dinner church rarely. Great. Then you'll go and stand by the first pillar here, and Jonathan is going to talk with you and then pray with you. If you're at step two, you guys, you're wanting to attend life groups, so you're already attending life groups, then you're going to go over and join Zach, and he's going to share with you, and he's also going to pray with you. If you're at step three, discipleship and soldiering, or you want to move in that direction, join Lexi at the third pillar of the discipleship and soldiering. And if you're feeling God calling you to serve, to help, to put your gifts into practice, then please join me at the fourth pillar of the serving brigade. Everyone, please stand. Discipleship and soldiering. Or you want to move in that direction, join Lexi at the third pillar of the discipleship and soldiering. And if you're feeling God calling you to serve, to help, to put your gifts into practice, then please join me at the fourth pillar of the serving brigade. Everyone, please stand. We're going to pray. And then I'm going to invite you to, to stand at one of these four pillars. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, God, that you are at work in our midst. We thank you, God, that you are building us through our struggles, through obedience, and through action, God. You are building us up. Thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you that you have us on this journey as Christians through these various steps, God. And we pray now that you would just speak to us as we go to one of these four stations. In Jesus' name, amen.